What is the best map to scav on? Everyone has a different answer to this question, but they can never provide actual evidence. So to try to answer this question and provide evidence, using only scav runs, I made 20 million on every map except for labs for a total of 180 million rubles made for this experiment. I then tallied up all of the stats in this spreadsheet, which I'm gonna go through in this video, and I'll put the link to the spreadsheet in the description below. I tried to control as many variables as I could, so for every test I ran on the same server, that is Australia, I started at the same time of day, 5 p.m. WAST GMT plus eight, which is about peak time for the server. I ran the test on the same type of day, that is weekdays, because there's a big difference between weekdays and weekends, where weekends are usually more popping. I had Intel level three for all of the tests and I kept my fence rep above six. I had no income external from scav runs, that is no insurance, no hideout, obviously no PMC runs. And I kept my general strategy the same, aiming for fast raids to play riskier if I had bad gear and safer if I had good gear, like a bigger bag. There are many variables that can't be controlled, such as loot drop rates, scav loadouts, the amount of players or player scavs in my raid, matchmaking time, flea market fluctuations. However, here are some variables that I think are not so obvious that may have had a large impact on the result. The Bitcoin price has gradually increased from about 700k to 830, 850 or so by the last test. My skill and knowledge of each map isn't the same, so I know some maps are a lot better than other maps, so I'd expect the results to be skewed in favor of the maps that, that I know better. I've basically been a labs main for about 8,000 hours until streets came out, and then have lived on streets for two wipes, so I know streets the best. Then on factory and interchange, I know pretty much every spawn as I have easily over a thousand raids on both of those maps. I also have over a thousand raids on shoreline and customs, but I don't enjoy those maps at all and I just get my quest done and leave the map until the next wipe. And finally, Lighthouse, Woods, Reserve and Ground Zero are easily my worst maps. The next uncontrolled variable is the scav skills will gradually increase throughout the runs. So later runs chronologically will be skewed positively because I'll have like a little bit higher endurance, a little bit higher strength. And similarly, my cooldown timer will gradually decrease as my hideout management skill increases, but it's very small. It's a very small amount, probably just like five to 10 second difference. And the last uncontrolled variable of note is that the time of wipe really affects the runs a lot. So for example, the economy changes a lot as the wipe progresses, like items required to craft early hideout upgrades become a lot cheaper and consumables for late stage hideout crafts become more expensive. And also generally PMCs get more geared and boss spawns increase. For streets, my strategy was to focus on Lexus, Chikanya, Mailroom, Golden World, the safe and Cardinal, the BSG headquarters, astronaut safe, museum and Concordia. My most common extract was Camjet Skya. Generally, if I had a bigger bag, I'd play a lot safer, more focused on external areas like Golden World, Astronaut, and the museum. But if I had a smaller bag, I'd play a lot riskier, focusing on Lexus, Chikanya, and the mailroom. The raids were really busy. There were lots of players and player scavs, so loot was heavily contested. Hot spots were often looted before I got there, but I did have a nice few PMC kills where I got out with insane loot. For interchange, I focused on the tech stores, such as the Idea Office, TTS, German, Rasmussen, Texo, and Techlight, any PC blocks, and I finished up looting through Ollie. From whatever spawn I got, I'd prioritize the tech stores as that loot usually gets taken early, and then I'd continue looting until I was full. There weren't many options for extracts, so usually I took Emercom as I could fill up at Ollie and run a shorter period overweight compared to running to Railway. I had a lot of desktop PMCs that I didn't see or just happened to blindly run straight into, and it was fairly contested with players and player scavs, but they were both pretty terrible at looting and left a lot of valuable loot behind. Oli and PC blocks were rarely looted. For factory, I focused on the tech crates, the one underground and the one by the med, med tents. Then I looted the med bags and med tents. And if I could, if it was safe enough, then I looted the first floor on the office. Then there were a lot of the scattered weapon crates, but they usually weren't that good. And as a last resort, it was a little bit risky, but I'd loot the top floor of the office. I typically extract at camera bunker door as gate 3 usually had a PMC making noise there and maybe extract camping and there was usually noise in the top floor of the office. If I spawned with amazing loot I'd instantly extract or if I had bad loot then I'd be running around for a couple of minutes and then I extract.
extracted, and the raids overall were really, really fast, even when I had a decent bag size. And I feel like I got pretty lucky with access cards. I spawned and extracted with 10 access cards. For Lighthouse, I focused on either the water treatment plant or the resort and chalet, depending on where I spawned, usually extracting the industrial gate zones or southern road extract all path to shoreline. The only times I didn't loot the water treatment plant was when I spawned really far away from it. Otherwise, big or small bag, I was heading to the water treatment plant for all those juicy loot spawns. Throughout the run, there were a lot of players still in the water treatment plant much later into the raid than I expected, and there was a lot of competition with other player scavs for loot, but I did get lucky with the Ledex from an airdrop. For customs, my strategy was really simple. I focused on construction, stronghold, and crack house. The main extract I took was warehouse four, but sometimes I got unlucky and had to run really far to extract. Regardless of bag size, I always aimed to hit stronghold and one of either crack house or construction, depending on what direction I was heading. Overall, the run was way worse than I thought it would be as I got team killed by other player scabs three times. The map is just filled with new players who are scared and shoot anything they see. If I didn't get team killed, customs would have almost been the best map. On reserve, my strategy was also extremely simple. If I spawned on the east side, then I would hit the school, otherwise called Black Bishop, and then get out the hole in the wall by the mountains. Or if I spawned on the west side, then I would hit White Knight and get out Depot Hermetic Door. I got a little bit lucky during this run. I was able to loot a few of Blue Heart's guards fresh and get out super quick, and I didn't die at all. I'm pretty sure I only even got shot at once. For Ground Zero, I focused on looting Capital Insight and getting out Nakatani Extract, or hitting Skyside and the Underground and heading to Amicom Extract. I stuck to that plan unless I had a tiny bag, and then I went Terra Group as that's more of a hotspot for PMCs, so I had a higher chance of finding dead scabs and PMCs to gear up. The run went great with only two deaths, but I didn't find any valuable loot at all. I'm not sure if valuable loot just doesn't spawn there or I, if I just got really unlucky. For Shoreline, this map had the most complicated strategy. If I spawned near the village, then I'd loot the village and get out Ruined Road. If I spawned near here, I'd loot the pier and get out Lighthouse. If I spawn near the resort, then I loot the resort and get out admin basement. Or if I spawn anywhere near lumber, then I would loot lumber mill and get out old bunker. However, if I spawned with a red flare, I'd head to an isolated extract like lighthouse or road customs, pop the red flare and just loot the cache and leave. Overall, the run went a lot better than I thought as airdrops carried it hard. I was able to loot four airdrops uncontested and extract with the loot. Without the airdrop, the long run times of spawn to loot to extract made shoreline very difficult. Finally, with woods, if I spawned around the camera bunker area, I'd head to the sunken village, loot all the gold swans there, then car village, and then get out eastern rocks. Then for most other spawns, it was ideal to hit the med camp, then extract. For example, if I spawn near the factory gate, I hit med camp, then go eastern rocks, or Ruaf, then I go to med camp, then the boat, or anywhere around the crashed plane, then I go to med camp, and then again the boat extract, or if I spawn anywhere around the attachment hut, then I'd hit the med camp, then go to railway or Ruaf. Finally, if I spawn anywhere around like outskirts or scav house, then I'd head to Yusei and then scav bunker. Like Shoreline, Woods was super carried hard by airdrops. I was able to loot six and extract with that loot. If not for those, the run would have easily been an hour longer. Overall in first was Reserve at 5 hours 58 minutes, which was an average of 3.35 million rubles per hour. Then we had Interchange at 7 hours 17 minutes, with an average of 2.74 million per hour. Then third, really surprisingly, Ground Zero at 7 hours 44 minutes, with an average of 2.58 million per hour. Then Shoreline in fourth at 7 hours 47, with 2.56 million per hour. Fifth, Customs at 7 hours 51, with 2.54 million per hour. Six was streets. This was really surprising to me. Eight hours and 31 minutes at 2.34 million per hour. I thought streets was going to easily be number one. Seventh was woods at eight hours 41 minutes with an average of 2.3 million per hour. Eighth was factory at nine hours and five minutes with an average of 2.2 million per hour. And huge surprise, ninth was lighthouse with nine hours 41 at 2.06 million per hour. I thought lighthouse would easily be second or third personally. Now, I also estimated how long 
it took in real time with the cooldown subtracted. So assuming a five and a half minute cooldown, what I did was I multiplied that by the number of raids and then subtracted that time from the total time to get the total amount of time from the moment I click ready into the map to when I extract, which is not including the cooldown. So for reserve, the total amount of time with the cooldown not included is 3.31 hours at 6.04 mil per hour. So in this spreadsheet, there are a lot of additional stats that are really interesting. For example, I estimated the total amount of time with the cooldown subtracted here in row 15. So I estimated a five and a half minute cooldown, multiplied that by the number of raids, and then subtracted that from the total amount of time. So you can see here, in row 15 is the total amount of time minus the cooldown and then the rubles per hour without the cooldown included. But it's important to note that I used the cooldown time to efficiently sell. So it's just, just take this with a grain of salt, it's just a estimation. And I made a little converter to convert my run speed into your run speed with a different cooldown. So like take this with a big grain of salt, but generally the idea is if you look at your cooldown, say if you cool down of 10 minutes and you just change this value here then what it's going to do is it's going to estimate the amount of real time as in you know say you start at start at noon right how like how many hours it's going to take for you to make 20 million with your cooldown and so say with a 10 minute cooldown on streets it would take 11.14 hours in real time to make that 20 million but of course this doesn't take into account other variables like with higher rep and therefore a reduced cooldown i have a higher chance of spawning with better loot and a bigger bag and you can also see other stats i recorded any interesting valuables that i got from all the maps down here and i had some overall stats that i personally was interested in like the overall access card likelihood like the, the the likelihood that I would survive with an access card. If you want to check out this spreadsheet for yourself, then go down into the description and click the link. And what, what you should do is click here, file, and then just make a copy in your own Google Drive and you can mess around with it. Overall, I felt like the streets and lighthouse new map hype, like them being kind of newer maps, made them a lot more oversaturated and riskier as there are a lot of content creators like myself making ruble guides on Streets and Lighthouse in comparison to Reserve, which was a lot less contested and much safer. And maps that had a long run time to get from spawn to loot and then to extract made each death cost far more in time compared to smaller maps like Factory. So in Lighthouse, if I died, I usually would have wasted like three to five minutes in the raid, whereas in Factory, a death would only cost me like 30 to 60 seconds. So while Lighthouse loot is amazing, it is also very risky, especially as I began these tests at peak time. So due to the high risk and high reward nature of Lighthouse, I expect future tests can have massively different outcomes and it would take a much longer test to get more conclusive results. On the contrary, Ground Zero had terrible loot, but the runs were very fast and safe. I think Ground Zero results are a much more accurate representation of the average money-making speed on that map. And lastly, to satisfy my own curiosity, I'm gonna run a much longer test on Interchange and Reserve, making 50 million on both maps. And in the comment section down below, I'll link a poll for a third map to be retested. So you all can decide on what you'd like to see retested to 50 million.